Today I want to share with you my path of learning how to desolder and resolder pins on a CPU. I have a project lined up that requires me to do this. And for that, I want to be prepared as best as I can. You may have seen my previous video where I tried to figure out if this Pentium 3 shows no sign of life because of the chipped die or because of the scratch on the substrate. As it turns out, this CPU is dead and I will use it today to practice on. Before we get to pin soldering, I want to try and see if a soldering iron can be used to repair broken copper traces. In my video before, I used solder paste. I thought it is a good idea aligning the paste properly and then just melt it with hot air. I was afraid that with a soldering iron I may damage the tiny traces, burn the surface of the substrate or create solder bridges. Since the CPU is dead, I don't have to worry about this anymore. Whenever I solder components, I noticed how valuable flux is. It is an absolute must-have if you want to create nice looking solder joints and if you want solder to flow towards metal pads and traces. And now I just use the iron with some preloaded solder and go over the traces. Wow, that works much better than I thought. Although the traces are super tiny, no solder bridges form. The traces accept the solder from the tip of the soldering iron and are now nicely covered by a tiny layer of tin. I can't believe I spent so much effort aligning solder paste last time. I have to say, I prefer the soldering iron over the solder paste. Much faster, cleaner, less heat to the overall CPU, I have nothing to complain about this method. The only thing I did notice though is that if you leave the soldering iron for too long on one spot, it discolors the surface of the substrate. Also some of the flux burned and left this hard to remove residue. Not every trace accepted the tin perfectly, but I think this is just a matter of properly cleaning the trace from any excess surface material that may still be covering the copper. And just if you're interested, I did try the CPU afterwards, but it's still dead. So we can move on to the other side of the CPU now. For some of you, this part may be painful to watch. As I already said, I have never done this before. This is me learning how to solder CPU pins. So I will probably do a lot of silly things, some unknowingly and some on purpose. Let's assume you only have a soldering iron. Is it possible to remove a pin from a CPU with it? I already have a suspicion, but I will try to do it anyway. Maybe if I touch the pin on the top with the soldering iron, the heat travels down and melts the solder. Then I could easily lift the pin off the CPU. And you can already see that this method has a huge drawback. Whatever solder is on the tip, it is partially transferred to the golden pin. And the next problem is that it looks like there is not enough heat transferred. Definitely not enough to melt the solder. Placing the soldering iron closer to the solder joint doesn't seem to improve this method. All I can see is that I'm spreading even more solder over the entire pin. Okay, this doesn't work. The pin is already covered in solder and useless. But I still want to know if I can at least remove one pin from the CPU. Even if that means I have to bury it in a mountain of solder. Okay, that worked at last. But the pin is now unusable. Not to mention that it is also covered in flux from the tin wire and very sticky. And to make sure that this is the worst experience ever, I wasn't careful enough and now the pin attached to the tip of my soldering iron to cover itself with even more solder. I had enough of this. Let me switch to hot air. I think we can already agree that with hot air we will no longer mess up the pins with solder. But now I notice that I have to pay attention to a myriad of other things. My hot air station is set to 370 degrees Celsius. And although it was set to the lowest airflow, the air pressure was still too strong. Once the solder melted on multiple pins, some of them were just pushed around and became misaligned. I cannot reduce the airflow any further, but I can change the nozzle to a larger one and increase the distance between the pins and the nozzle. This learning curve is quite steep, but I am sure it will get better over time and with more practice. One thing I have noticed is that the new solder melts way before the solder on the factory soldered pins. Something to consider when working on a larger area, I guess. But it also depends on the melting point of the solder wire you're using. Now I slowly get the hang of it. It is much easier to remove pins with hot air and tweezers. And it's really fun to do. You just have to be careful not to burn yourself. After a few attempts I found the right angle to avoid the hot air stream and at the same time to make sure not to disturb any surrounding pins. And again, it all comes down to practice. 
When old solder or even fresh solder gets reheated multiple times, it loses its flexibility and you can see this dull surface. Flux can help to prevent this, but I think it's much better to get rid of the old solder if possible. Here I'm just adding new solder, but you can probably wick off the old solder and get rid of it. And here it is, the first pin I have ever reattached to a CPU. There is still way too much solder between the pad and the pin, but I am just practicing. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Now let me continue with a second pin and show you how much I struggled going forward. So, about half an hour later, and I think I got a lot better with my tiny little golden friends. I got way more confident navigating through arrays of pins, find the right angles to work, and leave non-participating pins undisturbed. It's really not that difficult, it's just practice, practice and more practice. The downside is that you definitely need a microscope. Without one it becomes way more difficult, if not impossible. So what's my takeaway so far? A hot air station with a correct sized nozzle is essential. The right angles to work are important as well, otherwise you keep burning yourself. And use flux, it makes work so much easier. And if you can, remove the old solder as much as possible. I even try to remove the old solder from the pins, if possible. Just round them in flux and touch the solder side with a clean soldering iron. Some of the old solder will migrate to the iron and the rest remains nicely distributed on the pin. It just looks so much better when things are cleaned up. I think once you solder around 8 pins or so, you will feel much better about yourself. This is when you get over that learning curve bump. I still have to figure out the right amount of solder on the pads. Other than that, there is not much else to it. Maybe there is one more thing. After attaching a pin and you figured out the right angles, the right distance, added the flux and so on, you could try to reflow the pin. Basically, once a pin gets back on the CPU, it may not be aligned 100%. You could try to heat it up and as you can see here, the pin may travel just in the right spot. Let's see this again. That's so cool, isn't it? And we are almost at the end of this video. I will continue to practice because I have a bunch of CPUs with bent pins and some may actually have missing pins. I'll probably create a video in the future where I will just straighten, fix and test CPUs. And this is all I have for you today. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and let me know in the comments what I can do better or is it just more practicing from here on out. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.